All right, folks, today we're gonna be installing this Summit Hydraulics Diverter, well, actually third function kit on our Kubota BX23S. Now, Summit Hydraulics sent me this kit. They're a partner of mine, so you can go to their website, use code GWT, save 5% off of your kit. They have kits for all sorts of stuff. So kits for the front end, like for a grapple, rear remote kits, all kinds of things, Kubota, John Deere, Coyote, LS is coming, universal ones, you name it, all sorts of great stuff. So check them out for sure. So what a third function is gonna allow us to do is primarily, or the most popular application is using a hydraulic grapple. So you've got the two functions on here for your loader, raise up and down and curl and roll, but to open and close the jaws of a grapple as well, you need a third function. Most trashers don't have it, that's what we're doing today. But if you want more information on how that all works, we just did an overview video in a lot more detail recently. All right, so a little instruction book here. I did open this up. It's actually only a couple pages of actual instructions. A lot of parts layouts and diagrams to help out to recommend the tools. I've got some of it here. Some of it uh, we're gonna make do with right now. Torque wrench I don't have here. Um, we have that at our other shops. So I'll have to follow up with, with torque and these to spec later on, but just a general mechanic tool set, open-ended wrench set, crescent wrench. So uh, general stuff there. Just a list of what's included, a nice breakout diagram. Let's get to the good stuff here. Well, actually a nice schematic there as well. Lots of good diagrams, all right? So you really, you gotta go in a ways. And you got instructions here, instructions here. So it's four pages of instructions. Yeah, that's it, so. Let's get to it. I've got some plans actually drawn up to do a little DIY, nice workbench out here in the new barn. Until then, we make do. No big deal. Lay everything out here. Their wiring harness, our fittings, bracket, hoses. Another bracket there. One more bracket. Oop, I dumped out my zip ties. What do we got here? So we do have Ooh, five, five hoses. Yeah, five hoses total. Five. Hmm. One must go right from the power beyond to, and yeah, we'll figure it out. This preparation, park tractor on flat surface, put in park, turn it off like that. Chalks in front behind tractor's left wheel. I wonder if they sent a hose, oh. I think that extra hose was if I did end up doing the uh, the front and the rear kit at the same time. I think that's what they're doing. It was kind of an, an experimental thing or a, a trial thing. So I think I do have an extra hose here and that's what that's for. So don't pay too much attention to that. Install adapter, 3.8 JIC male, figure 1.5 into both P and T ports on valve assembly. Okay, front page, read before proceeding. Remove and discard cardboard plate and valve held in place by four yellow plastic inserts before attaching base plate as shown below. Now there's two, two of them in here. Step one, done. Secure valve to manifold with four included hex screws. Ensure P on valve is aligned with the pinhole on the manifold. So that little hole right there is aligned with the pinhole on the manifold. So we've got it oriented. There's the P, there's the pinhole. So like that. Four included hex. Oh, they go all the way through. Okay. Like. Is that not easily going in there? There. Huh. 
Install adapter. 3 8 JSC mail, SA org mail into both P and T ports on valve assembly. So here's our four ports, P, T, B, A. You'll see a little bit of verbiage there that says summit. And so we're matching up the orientation. We can see the summit um, uh, signature right there as well. So this is how we have it oriented. So P, T, B, A. So we're gonna put couplers here or fittings into these two ports right now. All right, just putting a little bit of hydraulic oil on here per their guidelines. Don't use uh, thread tape or, you know, pipe tape, the white stuff, Teflon tape or dope. Just a little bit of hydraulic oil, they say. It's fine by me. Thread that in. Hand tighten, they say. That's good. I can do that. I'll tighten those on there. Fa oh, do they want them both facing this way? Well, maybe I gotta back them off here and then tighten. Okay. Got those hand tightened on there right now. And put these little short straight jobbers on the other side. So like, I don't know, the vast majority of my tools are not here, but these nip backs normally come in pretty handy. They're non-marring. You guys pointed them out in some previous videos. Versus channel locks, they're really handy. And they're what I have on hand. So we're gonna make do. Think we're good there. So then we're gonna screw on these male quick couplers onto these fittings here. Oh, get a little bit more oil or a little dab. Spin. Let's take that right off. Tighten these down. Okay. Which one was uh? This was P. Yeah. Reference. Put a touch of oil on here. So this is the kind of thing you probably want to hit pause and rewind, you know, sometimes too, to see the right parts, make sure you're doing it. And we'll let you know if we uh, put them on in the wrong spot. I've done that before. I'm just following the instructions. And you know, it's clear once you go through it and match up the different the parts visually look different, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You know, with something like this with two um, hex heads on it. You know, you got some angles, some right angles, some 45 degree looking things. So it's, you visually kind of see what's going on here. And I think we're doing this the right way, but it's a bit of trial and error too. But if we can do it at the end of the day, you guys sure can too. This is looking correct. Next step, install an O-ring. We just looked around for the O-rings. They're actually already installed. So that's easy. Moving on, next step. Attach a male and a female coupler to the bulkhead adapters. Okay, so a male and a female 
well, this is a female here. That's a female. Oh, this one here, maybe? Is that right? This and this would match up, right? Take that off in there. Okay, yep. So those two are a match. Three eighths and three eighths. See how they pop in it. So these are really quick pioneer couplers, all right? So you have flat face, which are like on skid steers, like literally they're flat the whole way across. These are pioneer or ag style couplers. Three eighths is a really common size. Half inch is really common, especially on the back size, but there is no standard in the, uh, the tractor world, unfortunately, but you got a male and a female here and they mate together. Just pull back on this collar. So like your loaders are all gonna have four of these that are on the, uh, the tractor side of things. And then your loader hoses are gonna have these on the ends. So anyway, oil on here. Okay, so we got it oriented this way. We'll just do it the way that they show with this guy on here. And this guy on here. Wow, that's a girl. Thank you very much. This girl on here, male and female. That's on there nice. <clears throat> that's on there nice too. Guessing this guy here. So it does say to remove a carriage bolt, but there's this extra hole right next to it, so we're gonna utilize that. I've got this backhoe frame, subframe in the way that is making it a little tricky to get to. There you go, buddy. There is not a lot of room. Okay. Can I, maybe I might have to do this. I don't think my other, I don't think that wrench is gonna get up there. Boy, this is uh, it's a real doozy, real doozy of a spot here. But that's part of the deal. Is it on there? Can't tell, let's see if it's on there. There we go. All right, so it looks like this is gonna mount like this. Somewhere, somewhere right in there. You do have clearance, not a ton, but you've got it. I don't see any other way right now this could be mounted. So I think this is right, but I noticed our fittings here need to be rotated 180 degrees the other way. So we're gonna do that really quick. All right, so we've got a couple screws to secure it. I will say when we did, well, in fact, we've got the 1025 over there that we did previously. There is quite a bit more space on the 1025. And I'm not saying that negatively. Um, I don't know if that means Kubota used their space more efficiently or not. Probably can make a case either way on that, but um, it's just a little tighter around here on the Kubota than it is over on the John, on the John Deere. I would have much rather put these on first and then put that on. But that's not the instructions. Uh, tip for you guys, what I would do is put these on first and then mount this uh, in this location here. This is, this is kind of hard to, there's just no room. So, it would be a lot easier to do those, those steps in reverse, if you ask me. Folks, we got the Summit Hydraulics Kit installed. Well, and it was a team effort, okay? Because we did the first part out here, and then time just slips away. It just slips away. So many things going on out here. And then we were going on spring break, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna see if the guys 
my team at the shop, can take this over there, finish it up. We got the main valve body assembled here, installed, and all the fittings and all that kind of stuff done on there. What they had to do is basically route all the hoses, all right? So you have these couple hoses that you screw up. Well, actually, these have quick couplers that go on here. You just route them up front. You can see a couple zip ties go up here, and you're gonna clamp on um, the kind of the business end up here, right up there, and then you, we see we've got a grapple hooked up as well. And then you go on the bottom side, okay? And these two hoses feed in the bottom side of this block. You run them underneath here. Now, they did have to take the rear wheel off, okay? And you'll see some close-ups. I asked them to take some video, and, and we got a few uh, simple videos there too, and you're gonna see where these two lines just route right back here. It's accessible after you have this tire off, and you're just screwing the fittings right onto the, uh, the existing spots there on the tractor. So two lines, screwing in back here, kind of route it underneath, tie it right into that block, route the other hoses right up there, and then you do have an electrical component, all right? So your electrical component, and again, this is all included, all right? There are instructions as well, but I think it's nice to have a visual showing what's going on. So you've got this harness, okay, this black thing here, two uh, plugs that you just plug in, one on either end, okay? And you just kind of route it however you want to. Got it routed under, up underneath here. Now, right about just beyond here, you can't see it, it's hiding right there. It splits, all right? There's two lines here. It splits, one end is gonna go, kind of just tucked underneath here, the battery's hiding right back behind this panel. So it's just hiding right back there and you're getting your power off the positive and the negative. So easy enough there. The other end, you just kind of fish it up through. Right here is where it pops out. So you're just going from here, underneath the fender, there's a little pocket right up through there. You screw on your new handle. You got two buttons on here that you push. When you push a button, it opens up. You push the other button, it closes. So pay attention, this is actually different than the diverter kit we installed on the 1025R quite some time back. That is a diverter, okay? And so what I mean by that is when you push a button that's on that joystick there, okay, you then have to, there's gonna be some, some activity up here. You have to then move the handle one way or the other and it's gonna divert the flow that would normally curl or roll the bucket. And instead, when you have that, that button pushed, and you go left or right, set of curling or rolling, it's gonna open and close the jaws of the grapple. So this is actually a true third function, okay? The, you, you've got two buttons on here, and you push one button, the jaws open up, you push the other button, the jaws close, there's no pushing a button and then moving left or right to get it to do something. So in theory, you can do two functions at one time. However, the smaller tractors like the Kubota BX and really the 1025R and anything else that's in the small end of the, the spectrum and tractors, subcompacts and small compacts, they don't really have enough hydraulic flow. You're not gonna get a full speed doing two functions at one time. It just doesn't have the capacity to do so. And it's not really necessary. You know, typically when you're using a grapple, it's not a, it's not a game of speed anyways. It's more of a game of control and finesse. And so that's not a big deal, but I just wanted to point it out. So I think next step is we're gonna take this outside, find something to pick up a few different things, show you kind of how a third function is on a Kubota BX tractor, how fast it operates, how slow it operates. Uh, we'll show you more about this WorkSaver SCG grapple as well. This grapple only weighs 200 pounds, all right? It's perfect for small tractors. We have them for the John Deere Quick Attach and the Skidsteer Quick Attach. So for your Kubotas, um, Masseys, Coyotes, LS, you name it, you got a Skidsteer Quick Attach and it's a small tractor, a 200 pound grapple like this. It's also pocket friendly too. It's friendly on the budget, okay? We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com.
there you go, folks. Works just like it's supposed to work, you know? That's how a third function works. That's how a grapple works. They're really handy attachments to have. A couple other things I forgot to mention about that WorkSaver grapple too. You're gonna see there's a kickstand on either end, the left and the right, that way, when you wanna take it off and then reconnect to it as well, it'll stand upright just like that as long as you're on relatively even ground. Um, but really nice feature there. Uh, they don't come with hoses either. Now, most grapples, not all, but most grapples don't come with hoses. Some will. Oftentimes the ones that do come with it are not long enough. Um, I personally prefer and would like that grapples didn't come with hoses at all just because there's so many different setups on the front of the tractors. Sometimes your connection point's over here, sometimes it's over here, sometimes it's in the middle. Uh, they have different fittings on them. Sometimes they're both male, sometimes both female, sometimes one of each. Uh, quarter inch Pioneer, three eighths Pioneer, half inch Pioneer, half inch flat face. You have all these different combinations that you can possibly have. It can be really hard to determine what you have ahead of time and the right hose lengths and everything else. So. It can be a bit more of a pain, but I think you're gonna get a better setup if you wait until you have the grapple and then get your hoses and fittings afterwards. And then one limited, well, I'll say one, sh meh, boy, I wouldn't even say a shortcoming. Okay, one difference I would say between this WorkSaver grapple versus the Precision grapple. You're talking completely opposite ends of the spectrum as far as price point goes. Different steel, right? You're gonna get an AR400 steel, so a premium high-end steel that's very lightweight, allows you to get a bigger grapple on there too, bigger jaws, all that kind of thing, but you're paying a hefty premium for that. Um, the AR400 is so strong, and so you don't have to put as much steel in there, and so you still keep the weight down. Uh, one of the other big differences that I'm noticing having, after having using one of these WorkSaver grapples for the first time in a while is how much it opens. It doesn't open nearly as much as those precision grapples do. So, you know, there's probably just some engineering components that come into that as well, but yeah, you know, it, not that it's a bad grapple, but it's just, it's not gonna open as far as that precision. But I don't know, are you, how much are you saving? You're saving, it's about half the price, maybe 60% of the price of that precision too. So it's good to have options either way. So folks, that is gonna do it for us today. Again, check out the video if you have a John Deere. We did a specific install on that a couple years ago. Now we got one for you here on the Kubota as well. Pretty soon we're gonna be doing one on a Coyote and then potentially an LS after that. So Summit Hydraulics is coming out with all sorts of kits, both for the front end and for the backside too. I had a hydraulic rear multiplier on my, what was it, my 4066R. We're actually putting that on my Kubota M4 right now. So if you need a lot of additional circuits on the backside of your tractor, Say you have a hydraulic top link, there's a circuit. Hydraulic side link, there's a circuit. Um, I had a snowblower that had three hydraulic functions on it. So that's three, four, five different hydraulic circuits I had to have back there. And then just one to spare. Anyways, great DIY solutions where you can save money, get it done yourself, and you can save even more using code GWT. You'll get 5% off of your order. I'll get a commission that way too, so it's a win for everybody. Now, if you need a grapple or anything else to go along with those new hydraulics you have on your tractor, we'd love to help you out. Go to goodworkstractors.com. We ship all over the country. Free shipping, rewards, and financing too. If you enjoyed today's video, if you're a tractor nut and you want to see more, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit subscribe right down below. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.